Welcome, welcome to another week of Let's Talk Justice with Jamaicans for Justice on the Bridge 99 FM. Certainly it is the program that you are going to be made aware of what your rights are, but how you should also be treating your fellow Jamaican citizens. My name is Mikkel Jackson, Executive Director of JFJ. And I'm Jade Williams, the Policy and Advocacy Specialist at JFJ. So before we get into the formalities of the program, we just want to, of course, extend our appreciation to our donor, Open Society Foundation. And the topic that we're going to be discussing today is around the Disabilities Act. And I just want to point out before we get into the program that persons with disabilities would really reflect the very first case that JFJ had represented, which is the Michael Gale matter in 1999, where a mentally ill man was beaten to death by members of the security forces. And our work around helping those with mentally illness, it continued, where JFJ in 2020 and 2021, for example, assisted 10 persons to be released from prison who were there detained at the Governor General's and the court's pleasure, whatever that means legally. <laughs> Ooh. Well, with that introduction, I'm going to go straight into the right of the day for today. Mm -hmm. And today, our right of the day is the right to freedom of opinion and expression. And this right means that as a citizen, you have the right to express your ideas and opinions openly. And this also allows you to criticize religious and political issues. So where you see issues coming up with your government, issues coming up with your leaders, you have that right to challenge those issues. And you also have the right to seek information about issues that concern you from your government through the Access to Information Act. And with that in mind, I will share our trivia for today, which is, when was the Access to Information Act passed? And as we would have said last week, and reminding those just tuning in, um, when you answer the trivia for the day, you can win a thousand dollars credit for the network of your choice. Um, so the trivia should, for those of you joining us on YouTube, it should be up on screen. But when was the ATI Act passed? So you can let us know what your response is through our social media pages, or you can give us a WhatsApp message at two three nine seven five eight three. All right, great. So before we start our topic, we just want to do a little recap of some of the major human rights issues that we saw coming out last week. And let me start. Last week, we had indicated that the Senate had met and they reviewed the firearms legislation. And one of the major changes that we saw them make in Jade and listeners is around Section 5, which indicated that persons um, who were charged with legal possession of a firearm yes. stood the possibility of life imprisonment. Yes. And for those who are not aware, JFJ is against that. The Senate um, would have corrected that error in judgment that was passed by the lower house and it's no longer life imprisonment for illegal possession it is now 15 to 25 years but we have seen where that life imprisonment has now shifted wherein if it is that you are charged with causing injury to another person you can get life imprisonment there but again another part was also amended wherein if it is that you cause damage to property it's now 15 to 25 years yes. but all the other areas that we had called for unfortunately the senate did not necessarily um, address it which is really around the judicial discretion which we believe is important and shifting gears a little bit mm -hmm. we have seen last week where there are several instances of violence among our young people and unfortunately, a young girl lost her life um, who was stabbed to death by another youngster. And that person is now facing um, a murder charge. Yes, um, and it is one of many. This is mm. it's not the first case. It's actually becoming a bit of a trend now. Yes. And um, I think it's something that we have, as a nation, we have not been adequately addressing in a holistic manner. I don't think that we have really pinpointed you're why you're focusing on the wrong things in school grooming policy and, and long skirts <laughs> well Michael, your parents i can understand how your passion might come up for this topic absolutely <laughs> um but i will say that um as a person who's just been observing the policy issues we mm -hmm. have not been able to 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 fully address in a holistic manner why there is this increase in violence but the policy is there you have the child diversion act for example you yes. have the restorative justice program i'm just not sure what the resources are you have the PALS in school initiatives. I, I really think 
deadline cool. asking for more resources. Actually, what I'd want to see some information about is implementation. Mm -hmm. Where has that failed in some of these mm -hmm. initiatives and where can we improve these initiatives so that they don't fail again in the yes. future? And lastly, <laughs> last week, we heard from a public official who saw it fit to remind the nation that the constitutional rights to which we are entitled are somehow preventing Parliament and the JCF from controlling crime. So apparently trampling on the human rights of citizens is the way to go to addressing the crime in the country. And I would hope that well-thinking Jamaicans rebuff such statements, reject it completely, and we urge the Parliament through the legislators to ensure that necessary laws are there that would ably see the JCF getting the resources, the policy and legislative framework to do the work that we entrust them to get done. So we stand with the officers certainly, but we must reject the public utterances by public officials around the constitutional rights of Jamaican citizens somehow being, being an impediment. Hindrance. Yes. yes. But we move on. Um, we're going to be having conversations today around the Disabilities Act, but I think we are going to take a break at this time, and then when we return, we will have mm. several persons joining us, Dr. Floyd Morris, Dr. Christine Hendricks, as well as Dwight Campbell and Mrs. Dion Jennings. So we continue on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Let's Talk Justice. And after seven long years the Disabilities Act was finally in effect and it came into effect on Valentine's Day, February 14, 2022. Yes, um, and the re regulations were prepared in 2021. Yes, and the Act really makes provisions to safeguard and enhance the welfare of persons with disabilities across Jamaica. Yes, and the Act will be is supplemented by, uh, well, it, it, uh, it asks for the institution of the Jamaica Council for Disabilities, who should have oversight of the operations of the Act. It also establishes a complaints tribunal where persons who are affected by mm -hmm. um, what, what we call the issues in the Act, um, so persons who feel like their rights have been breached, persons who feel like they have not been properly treated under the Act can make a complaint to that tribunal. And just to indicate that the Disabilities Act really focuses on the full inclusion of persons with disability in areas such as the rights to education and training, right to employment, right to adequate health care and accessible facilities, and the right to housing and to enter premises. It also includes provision of public passenger vehicles that are accessible to and usable by persons with disabilities. And to join us in this discussion we have in studio, Dr. Christine Hendricks, who is the Executive Director of Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. Um, welcome, Thank Dr. Hendricks. We also have on call with us um, Opposition Senator and Spokesperson for Social Security and Special Abilities, Dr. Floyd Morris. And we also have joining us Dion Jennings, Chief Technical Officer within the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, as well as Mr. Dwight Campbell. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, thank you very us. much. But uh, let me just make a quick correction. I'm no longer spokesperson on labor and special abilities. I'm spokesperson on housing and sustainability. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Morris, um, for making that correction for us. All right, since, since your mic is open, Dr. Morris, how did you feel as a mm. member of the community when the, the mm. act finally came into effect in earlier this year? Well, I was ecstatic about it. I mean, this is something that we have been waiting for uh, seven years. Mm -hmm. And if you factor in the time when we started the journey to create the legislation in, I think, 2003, 2004, it would have dated back to uh, some 19 years, you know. So it has been a long time in coming. and. It is a major, major uh, milestone for persons with disabilities in Jamaica. Great. And, and for you, Mr. Campbell, same question? Well, in, in relation, you, you're, you're talking about in relation to the... The, the law finally coming to effect. How did you feel yes. when you heard the announcement? Well, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm not particularly thrilled about it because I'm mm -hmm. used to you know, talking and talking and no action. As a matter of fact, when it was announced um, from last year that um, February 14 would be the day, 
I, I was I'm half expecting it um, to be, you know, to, to not actually happen. And that day I would not have been surprised if it didn't. But now that it has happened, I'm asking myself, what does it all mean? Because um, nothing has changed. Well, it's kind of quick now, but like um, Dr. Mars just pointed out, it has been years and years and years that that has been in the making. And, you know, having reached this point now, you know, the question still remains what will happen in terms of action because I am still not being not able to get a job. I'm still unemployed. I have been for years and years and I virtually, well, literally having to be begging in order to survive. I can't, I can't pay my rent. Where I'm living right now, it is just because the landlady is a very understanding lady and she, you know, she knows my situation and everything, but I owe her back rent and I don't know how that is going to be cleared. I don't know what will happen going forward in terms of, you know, living conditions and just living generally because I basically, like I said, have to be begging in order to be, to, to, to survive from day to day. Well, begging Mr. Campbell. Be, yes, those well, begging doesn't necessarily mean going on the street and holding out your hand because that doesn't really work anyway. But um, I have a few acquaintances that I know that, you know, I should reach out to from time to time and, yeah, I often wonder sometimes if you're tired of me because I do it so often. But that is it. I can't get a job. I mean, I took the time and I got a scholarship um, from Scotia Foundation. And I, in 2017, I was awarded a BSc in Business Administration from NCU. But that, I mean, I don't even like talking about that because that seems to me nothing. I continue to reach out um, for employment and people keep turning me down just the same. So in other words, that has made zero difference to my effort. Well, Mr. Campbell, you've ventilated a lot of issues um, mm -hmm. just now. You've ventilated quite a few issues. Um, okay. And I think one of them that I'd like to jump off of and engage our guest in studio on, because um, what he would have asked, um, for, for our guest in studio, we've been having some technical difficulties, but for our guest in studio, what he would have asked is, um, now that the act is passed, what does that mean for persons living with disabilities? And through his, dis his discussion, he would have talked about the challenges that he faces and continues to face to live an essentially a normal life um, and wonders how will the passing of this act um, enable him to do better. So I, I don't know if you can ventilate some of the key areas in the act um, for us. Okay. okay, thank you very much for having me here and thank you Mr. Dwight Campbell, Campbell for sharing today. Now the, the Disabilities Act in addition to establishing the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities mm -hmm. as a statutory body with particular mandates to ensure the implementation of the act and also mm -hmm. establishing a disabilities rights tribunal ensures that persons with disabilities are able to adequately participate fully in society and have their rights upheld. And of course, one of these rights would include the right to employment. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities in the previous organization as a department under the Ministry of Labor prepared uh, with the assistance of stakeholders and you know consultancy, the code of practice for employment. Um, which outlines practical guidelines to society as to how a uh, person should go about ensuring that uh, persons with disabilities are employed and also ensuring that persons with disabilities prepare themselves for the employment space. The act, of course, uh, is not a um, quick fix to an age-old challenge of persons with disabilities basically being left out of society and being marginalized. However, it is seeking to bring our society to the place where persons with disabilities are recognized for the humans that they are and the citizens of Jamaica that they are. And so um, I know that the employment situation will not be fixed quickly. Um, although it is, it, but the act um, ensures that if it is that someone is qualified, 
makes an application just like anybody else they enter the competitive space just like everybody else and once given that opportunity to an interview if it is that they come out as the successful applicant then the disability should not prevent them from taking up that opportunity so may i ask um because the act was just passed earlier this year right is there an implementation period for those employers um, who may be unaware of the obligations that they may now have under the act, is there anything that, um, is there any time period in which they have before claims can be brought against them or know that the act is in place, claims can be brought? Well, once the act comes into effect, which it came into effect on February 14, um, then complaints can be brought to the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. Um, and if, if, if the matters cannot be resolved, then they would be addressed to the Disabilities Rights Tribunal. Okay, so mm -hmm. before, before we get into that though, um, Mrs. Jennings? Yes, I'm here. Um, good afternoon. Thank you so good much afternoon. for joining us. From That's the right. Ministry of Labor and Social Security, you've heard from Mr. Campbell. While we get the society in order, I won't say the host, it's because it's the society at large. What benefits and programs currently exist within the Labor and Social Security Ministry that could assist Mr. Campbell and for those who are unable to secure the employment that would see some better living conditions for them? Okay. Afternoon again and to your listeners. I, I must indicate that there are quite a number of um, social programs that are available. As a matter of fact, um, the council itself provides support for persons with disabilities. Maybe Mr. Campbell, in the meantime, while he's pursuing you know, opportunities for job, maybe his own independence, maybe he wants to consider working for himself, the council provides opportunities for um, economic empowerment grants. It's um, $250,000, Dr. Hendricks? $150,000. $150,000 that they provide. Um, they also provide um, assistive aids. Um, that is up to $250,000, $250, right. So um, for enterprise activities, so maybe he could think about an enterprising activity that he could start and that the council could support him with in the meantime. Um, there are opportunities under the labor market and information system, electronic labor exchange, where persons with disabilities can place their resumes on the system and um, where there are opportunities um, employers can um, look at those resumes and consider employment. So. Um, Considering that Mr. Campbell is saying that this has been happening for some time, maybe there is the opportunity for um, career counseling and support, um, which the new JCPD will be able to provide. But in the meantime, we have social workers within the ministry, I'm sure would be able to assist him and provide some guidance where that is concerned. So that's a case that we can take up, and I'm sure there are others. Yes, because just to indicate, we've gotten several complaints, if you will, um, mm -hmm. to Jamaicans for Justice, which is why we found it very important to have you all join us to really educate persons with disabilities on the provisions that you have. Um, so I, I think the question is, and Jade had started the conversation earlier, what is the public education process like to get the legislation to an implementation stage? where persons with disabilities are aware of their rights within the law, as well as some of the social service benefits that exist. And um, I'm going to start with you, Mrs. Jennings, and then over to you, Dr. Hendricks. Okay, so um, as part of the, we, we understand that information is power, where um, persons, once persons have that information and they are more aware, it can assist them further 
So the ministry generally, through its um, public education program, highlights you know different aspects of the services that we offer. Um, the JCPD through its website, and we also had a particular campaign where we highlight different rights through different ads and so on. But the campaign definitely needs to be sustained. And we actually, um, through the ministry, facilitated um, a public relations company, but um, that was not able to deliver in accordance with what the requirements were. And so that is something that is being pursued now to further um, improve the mm -hmm. and continue the public education. And the JCPD still continues public education activities, um, sensitization sessions. Um, we've been do we have done the private sector and um, the public sector is on board as well. Um, so through different workshops and so on, we continue to provide the information. But of course, we know it has to be on a sustained basis. And this is where the campaign, the public education campaign, um, will, will, um, will, will be work. more advanced. Uh -huh. So before we get to the break, um, Dr. Hendricks, um, just to piggyback quickly, um, based on the sensitization sessions that have been had, are you able to indicate how many companies have since adopted the code of practice that you have? Okay, so the, the code of practice is currently in draft. Okay. So um, the, the, the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities is in a transition period yeah. from the department to setting up the body corporate. So actually recruitment mm -hmm. is taking place. So the, the, the staff to, to carry out the, this implementation or to ensure this implementation is still in progress. So um, we are working towards ensuring that, you know, in the new financial year, we are fully staffed out so that we can, you know, ensure what needs to be in place. But in the meantime, we do have our operational um, team who are continuing to ensure that persons are registered and, you know, persons can receive the benefits that were there before. Because the organization before is part of a department of the new statutory body. So you can understand that um, the, the work of the council is um, was limited. Is, is, is enhanced um, yes. by, by this act yes. and able to uh, facilitate in a, in a better way and in a more um, developmental way the issues of persons with disabilities. It will take some time because you know that recruitment and you know taking on and starting up any organization is um, will take time. Right, so hold that thought um, for us, Dr. Hendricks. We're going to take the break now. Dr. Morris, I wanted to just um, ask, you've heard some of the discussion that would have had with Dr. Hendricks and with the minister and, I, and with Mr. Campbell as well and some of the issues that he would have ventilated and I wonder if it is something that you are familiar with, these kinds of complaints. Um, and whether or not you think, based on what the minister and Ms. Hendricks would have said, these are things that we can have addressed in, in a short order. The Chief Technical Director. Um, <laughs> correction, <laughs> thanks. Understandable. I mean, she's from the Ministry of Security. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my apologies. Yeah. The situation. I'm not hearing Dr. Morris. Well, is it from our end? Uh, you're hearing me now? A little bit better, but you're, you're somehow me? muffled. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Much better. You, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm saying it's a situation that I am much um, familiar with in terms of my advocacy work, in terms of my research. Um, you know, being in Parliament as well. Uh, employment is a major challenge for persons with disabilities. And because individuals don't know how to relate to these individuals, they are discriminated because they are seen as uh, individuals who are going to be burdensome in uh, their workplace, you know, not knowing that once they provide the necessary technological support uh, and other support uh, for persons with disabilities, these individuals can function uh, normally at the workplace. 
you know, um, I, I, I want to say to uh, Mr. Campbell, be not cynical about the legislation because the legislation is going to address in a fundamental way some of the discriminatory practices that are impacting uh, individuals like yourself. But it's not going to happen instantaneously. I mean, you wouldn't expect the legislation to be passed and brought into effect in February. And uh, we are, and we would see uh, a mass increase of employment of persons with disabilities. Ableism is real in the Jamaican society and in, in, in employment, in healthcare, all of those fears. And ableism is speaking to the beliefs and the processes and the practices that individuals uh, have as it relates to persons with disabilities. And, uh, and, 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 and this is deeply entrenched in the Jamaican society. And that is why mm -hmm. things like public education is going to be critical to dealing with that. Um, and we have to make sure that that is ongoing. But one thing that I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit concerned about, because I think the process of, uh, of getting staffing for the JCPD and so on is going a bit slow in light of the fact that the legislation came into effect in February. And just and to point out before you continue, Senator, it was very clear last year when the regulations were adopted by Parliament in, um, in 2021 that the act was anticipated to come into effect in 2022. Absolutely. So with that anticipation, you're saying that you're a little bit disappointed with the pace of implementation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and I, I, brought, I raised that matter when we were discussing the legislation as well and uh, the, the regulation as well, you know, because, it, it, I mean, eight months have uh, elapsed and... The, the, the minister, in fairness to the minister, the minister mm -hmm. gave notice that the um, legislation would have come into effect um, from last year. So, I mean, all of these preparatory work should have been done already. And I happen to know that individuals have been calling me and poor me because I tell persons with disabilities that all I have is a big mouth that I can advocate for them, but I have not had any executive responsibilities for persons with disabilities from 2007. And, you know, when they call me, you know, I mean, I, I feel the pain, I feel the anger, I feel the disappointment. And there has to be a way to expedite the staffing issues at the uh, new JCPD, and also to bring the Disability Rights Tribunal into effect because that is another critical component of the legislation. And also to make sure that the codes of practice, which is uh, foundational to guiding companies and institutions against uh, malpractices for, for persons with disabilities, at the workplace and in educational institutions. Those codes of practice have to come to the fore post haste. Yes, and, and at the risk of my staff giving me bad eyes, I can commit to JFG assisting, if so needed, in that codes of practice being drafted and any sensitization sessions, mm -hmm. at the risk of them looking at me side-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I must say JFJ has been part of the consultation process. Yes. So we continue to um, thank you for your support. And, uh, you know, hearing some of the issues that Senator Morris would have raised just now, I have to ask Dr. Hendricks how, because as he would have said, one of the major points of the legislation mm -hmm. is the tribunal and persons actually being able to access some sort of redress for when these rights are breached. Um, so what's the status of the tribunal? Is it constituted? Can persons start making complaints now? How do we make complaints? <laughs> All right. So um, 
the recommendations have been made in terms of the different professionals and legal persons and disability experts that are uh, expected to be on this tribunal. There is a secretariat that's also um, part of the establishment of the tribunal. But before we get to the tribunal, the investigatory aspect and the complaint has to be made to the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities and an investigation done from there. Um, and so b before um, Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities was established by the Act, persons would have complained about different matters that even before our statutory state, we were able to um, meet, uh, find a common ground with others with whom persons with disabilities would have had issues and um, we would have helped to resolve some matters. And so even before we get, we do not have the staff yet, but even before before we get to there and before we get to the tribunal, if the matters are brought to our attention, intervention can be made um, even now. Okay, so are we looking at early next year for the tribunal? No. I think it will, ha I think it will happen before that. Actually, the submission is complete. But I must say that um, we need attorneys at law with at least seven years' experience to be chair and deputy chair. Mm -hmm. Um, of the tribunal, and that has been a little um, problematic so far. But I think we're making some inroads where that is concerned, and so we should, before the end of the year, have a tribunal in place. Amazing. Okay. All right, great. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're just going to take some last words, and we're going to keep Dr. Hendricks with us a little bit <laughs> um, for the call-in <laughs> segment. I hope that's okay. But, Okay. Uh, can so, I just, yes, Senator, go ahead. Can I just say one quick thing? Because I heard uh, what Miss Jennings said, and I heard what Miss um, Dr. Uh, Hendricks said. But, you know, I still believe that, I mean, uh, having brought the legislation into effect in um, February, eight months is far too long for any sort mm -hmm. of inactivity, um, or at least the Disability Rights Tribunal mm -hmm. should have been in place. Because it's not just in February that we know this legislation was going to come into effect and that it required certain skill sets for yes. uh, the DRT. So, you know, I mean, I, for me, I find that inexcusable. All right. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, Mr. Campbell? Say, though, we have no control over persons wanting to serve as chair or deputy chair, but I think this is an activity that has been sought after, trying to, res um, to appoint someone who is willing to chair and to be deputy chair with the required expertise that is needed. And also to say that um, in preparation for the Disabilities Act, there are several positions that were advertised. And of course, um, in some cases, we got um, limited responses. And while we had limited responses for some um, in trying to get persons, well, time would have elapsed somewhat. Um, persons would have gotten other opportunities and so on. But we're still having that as a priority, getting those priority posts in place for the mm -hmm. positions for the JCPD. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Jennings. Um, Mr. Yes, Campbell, yes, last yes, word for yes. you. All right. Um, first of all, uh, well, and Mr. Some... Campbell can also apply for any other posts that are advertised. So I was just time. about to encourage him yes. to. Sure. Yeah, yes, I was about to mention that as well because I did apply once and um, I was told by Dr. Hendricks that um, I needed to be trained in social work in order to get mm. it. So, oh, what I'm thinking was, that that was before the council. Okay, all right. Or maybe so, before you were mm -hmm. qualified. Now you mentioned your certificate. So. I was qualified at that, that time. I, I did um I did complete um college at that time and I was I had my degree and everything. Well, so Mr. Campbell, it sounds yes. like there are some new opportunities that may be available right. for you with the new J C P D. Yes. Okay. Um and I would also ask for Doctor Hendricks to share her final thoughts as well. Before. Well Doctor Hendricks oh. will be with us so she oh, can well. then because we have to take the break. Um, right now, but I just want to thank um, all the guests, um, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, um, Doc, uh, Mrs. Jennings, my apologies, <laughs> um, Chief Technical Director at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, and Mr. Um, can Campbell. I, can I do, 
Can I just ask one more question before you break? Sorry. I'm, I'm going Mr. to ask Campbell, you to hold on the line for yes, us. Yes, please Mr. Campbell, hold on the line. And, break and for those, yeah. All right. All right, so we had our public view question for the yes. week. And our public view question was, what more can be done to protect and pr- promote and respect the rights of persons with disabilities? So I think we have a response for our pro- from our production team. I would say too that I'm not sure if they have discounts for persons with disability, but um, if not, they they could incorporate something like that. Because remember now, like, um, majority of persons with disability um, is just going to have like an entry level job and it's just like a minimum wage job that they barely earn which is what my son goes through so when he has to pay um well i know he has his car that he can take the bus and he would pay less but most time the JUTC bus take long to come he has to take the taxi and that takes a big chunk out of his little earnings lunch and you know buying lunch and all these things so i think that um they should take that into consideration and then should just um look on uh you know doing stuff so they can get discounts and um i think there is something for them in terms of housing however now i hear that nhd has no houses anymore so i don't know i really don't know all right so that was someone calling in sending a voice note if you will to our whatsapp yes yes um to talk about our public view which is what more can be done to assist persons with disabilities and what i hear them saying is essentially greater social intervention Mm -hmm. which um would have discussed somewhat with the guests on the call already and i have my own call from the government i really think the government should be considering guaranteed minimum income because the matter of stigma and discrimination and how society really addresses persons with disability i think needs to be addressed because of the the low employment levels within the community itself i think a guaranteed minimum approach generally is something that the country should move towards which ensures that persons get some benefit from the government cash conditional transfers a little bit more than what we see with the path program I know that Dwight is still on the program before we get to our other callers. Dwight, you said you had one more question. All right. And it, it, it's kind of um, multi-pronged, if, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. Dr. Hendricks mentioned um, different um, programs that I could access. And I was just thinking that, you know, so many obstacles are thrown up um, along all path coming down. Because when I, somebody suggested once that I apply for PARC, and what they told me was that I didn't qualify because... I was already receiving government assistance. They were referring to the, the, the minuscule um, disability pension that I was receiving. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't do anything, but they're saying that even if it's a $1 that I'm getting based on that, then it, it, it unqualifies me for anything else. So that's something that needs to be looked at as well. Okay. Yes, sir. I think that goes back to, to Mikhail's point about um, having a, just a mandatory minimum um, level that we should be moving towards. For any vulnerable persons in society, yes. I, I believe we have to get to that type of social security um, provision. Yes. Um, in relation to that, there is, there is something about an ID that disabled persons are supposed to have. I do not have one and I've never had one. And I was just wondering, but because I was talking to somebody um, at Surgix the other day, he deals with the, well, well, he works there, and I usually talk to him, but he revealed to me that he had an ID. Oh, and well, I, I, I give you 30 more seconds, Mr. Campbell. And so I you're actually, asking about the ID? Yeah, but I actually think um, maybe I can address that because I think what you might be referring to is the registration that can be done under the Act, which I think would have just started in February when the Act was implemented. Um, no, so I think ID. what you no, no, no so the ID, ID would would indicate that you are a person living with disability under the Act, and therefore whatever benefits mm-hmm. you gain under the Act, the ID would allow you to to legitimize yourself. Um, and, and if I'm wrong, Dr. Hendricks, you can jump in. Yes, um, if I can just clarify. So the ID that um, Dwight is speaking about is an is an ID that provides for concessionary bus fares for areas that have 
the government buses. So in Kingston and some other urban areas, there are uh, particular um, benefits in terms of lower bus fares mm -hmm. um, for, for persons with disabilities once they produce this ID. So once you're registered with the JCPD, you can apply for an ID. It is outsourced, so there's a cost to, to, to the ID. Okay. Um, and so that ID in the, new, in the new dispensation, when persons are registered, you will get a, a certificate of registration, well, which mm -hmm. will um, identify you as a person registered with the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. So there are two um, different um, ah, okay. things there. The NIDS program that is coming up that will provide a national identification, we are partnering with NIDS to just ensure that persons with disabilities who are identified as such can also um, freely, um, if they so desire, um, receive mm -hmm. that national ID with needs and also they can receive right now a free birth certificate for those who do not have birth certificates. Okay, great. Awesome. Right. We um, have one call tomorrow. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I, I, I missed most of the conversation but I wanted to find out um, information about support for students at the early childhood level Mm -hmm. who may are uh, may have uh, like a learning disability and they are in the general classroom what support exists um dr hendrix yeah, are you able to exists? are they um can they be kicked out of school is there an act to protect them and their education all right so are you talking about persons who are um slow in learning developmentally yes, which for means example, for what... example if the person is autistic Okay, uh, persons okay. with autism. So persons okay. with autism are considered as persons with disabilities and under the act are protected and should be provided for. The Ministry of Education has a special education unit and they do have um, facilities to facilitate the, mm -hmm. the um, inclusion of persons, children with disabilities in, in, in schools. So they can provide shadows if pers the person will require a shadow or they will help to place the child in a particular school that will provide for the uh, particular needs in terms of the therapy and whatever special attention that would be required. If it is that the child is going to a uh, regular school um, mm -hmm. alongside everybody, similarly, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education, Special Education Unit can um, facilitate. So parent, if you can speak with the, the head of the Special Education Unit, then um, your child should be facilitated and should not be kicked out of school. If the child is kicked out of school, then that is definitely discrimination. If and, it is because And there's a differentiation the in the act between mental disability. disorder and intellectual disability. Yes, definitely. Can, can you quickly clarify the difference? Uh, so um, persons with intellectual disabilities are persons whose IQ is below 50 um, and they are not able to move beyond a grade six level usually. Mm -hmm. uh, they would not matriculate to high school and so on. They also have some sh social um, challenges uh, that would identify them as um, some persons might think that they're not acting appropriately, but because of how they, you know, they process things, then their behavior, you know, and thinking is, is different from others. Persons with mental disorders are varied. So mm -hmm. you have um, persons who would fall with mental illness in the mental illness category. And you also have persons with mental disabilities who will fall on the learning disabilities um, um, category. So, so it is a broad spectrum that deals with a number of disabilities, even by saying mental disabilities. So, um, if I may, I had one question for myself actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, uh, we, we've talked a lot about a lot. One thing that comes to my mind is it that you can, for example, be registered, identified as a person with a disability, and then be deregistered. So, so like for example, my younger brother, because he hits close to home. Um, my younger brother, he suffered with um, epilepsy 
that was uncontrolled as a child and it led him to develop certain learning challenges um and i don't know if he would have escalated to being considered having a disability but had he he's now in a much better place it's under control he's managed his learning outcomes so mm -hmm. i wonder um can you be deregistered <laughs> yes the regulations provide for that um, because there are although it is that a disability is permanent uh, should be permanent we, we we find that sometimes with treatment with technology um, situations change yes. um, mm -hmm. we also find now that you have certain uh, uh, professionals medical professionals that will are reluctant to say that even a spinal cord injury injury is permanent because of how sometimes some persons respond over time mm -hmm. sometimes it takes years so at a particular point in time you may have what is deemed as a permanent disability however mm. interventions and whatever technology that would have played its part would result in the individual no longer having that disability and if it is found that that person no longer has the disability then the certificate um, is no longer valid when you get it and how many persons you have registered currently all right so currently from the department jcpd coming into um this new era we have over fifteen thousand who have completed the registration process okay. however we have over forty five thousand persons who have applied to be registered mm. because the registration process is twofold um there is an application for registration and a verification process that a medical professional has to um, complete um, and if the disability is not verified then the person cannot um, be deemed as a registered individual. Is Understood. this something that you put the cost for the verification as the person disabled or is this something that JCPD can assist with in um, terms of financial support? The JCPD currently does not um, foot the cost. We are, however, working with the Ministry of Health and the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association to have them facilitate persons um, th that verification process, which is very critical to ensuring that we are not having you know a lot of persons who come into a register who do not have a disability all right thank, thank you. you so much you. dr hendrix i think we need another few more conversations on this particular <laughs> yes, topic yes. um but we appreciate you being here but we, we are have very to, much out of time yes <laughs> we're very very much out of time um so um unfortunately we're gonna have to wrap up quite quickly so our trivia who, yes who is the our winner? trivia response um we did get a winner to our ig page so those of you you're missing out on your free credit for not responding <laughs> to our free tri to our trivia but our trivia question was when was the access to information act passed and the response was 2002 so we would like to come congratulate confident palmer who responded on instagram someone from our confident with our answer yes she is yes. so <laughs> someone from our team will reach out to you and right. provide you with your free credit so thanks for participating All right. thank you so much to everyone our guest um those who are part of the production team bridge 99 thank you and next week we will see each other and just reminding you all that is justice for one justice for all i'm michael jackson executive director jfj and i'm jade williams policy and advocacy specialist see you next week